they were right up close to that shoreline grass. Hey, what's up, y'all? Well, it's pretty dang chilly, man. We uh, would drop down to freezing temperatures the last couple of nights, and if I was going to fish the next couple of days, I would definitely fish deeper water with the mud bottom, and uh, preferably with some shell, um, and preferably deeper than four or five foot deep. So a warming trend towards Tuesday, 62. So on the afternoon of Tuesday, it is possible that, uh, that I would feel confident in going in shallow uh, on the warmer afternoon. Also, the rest of the week is gonna be high 60s, and then Saturday it gets up to 70. And, uh, and our lows are not, not too bad, so I usually like for that water temp to warm up a little bit and the overall temperature. And if it'll warm up a little bit, then I feel comfortable with fishing in shallow early in the morning like I did in the last video. So it's one of those things I just put my hand down in the water and, and say, yeah, you know, this, this is gonna work for, for catching reds in shallow, so. water temps good they're gonna be in shallow but definitely on the warmer afternoons uh if i was gonna fish in the afternoon then uh i would i would go shallow i would at least go through there and see if i can see some activity some bait fish you know popping or flipping and if i don't see that bait fish activity happening in shallow then uh i won't I personally won't even go in there, so I'll stay to the stick to the deeper water. Shoreline grass, a freaking amazing uh, type of structure that holds fish, and more importantly, the structure changes within the shoreline grass. So uh, obviously, shoreline grass is your shallow water scenario. So on the warmer afternoons, this is where I would fish, and these points and pockets and bends and cuts that the shorelines make uh are all great fishing spots uh if i don't see any activity but i just see that structure change while i'm out there then i'll stop and look right there for a couple of minutes i may even make a few blind casts to some of these structure changes knowing that they hold fish um, i mostly sight fish based on activity but if i come across some of these structure changes then i'll blind cast in there and and hook up uh, pretty often like that so being familiar with these structure changes will will help you find a lot a lot more fish so so first of all uh how to see and read google earth to find these type of scenarios you want to find a shoreline that has a bunch of these different structure changes in it and what you're looking for on google earth is this color change right here this brown color is your shoreline grass and if you're unfamiliar with what shoreline grass is. It's the grass that sticks up out of the water that's right next to a shore. So uh, I'm not talking about the submerged grass. That's definitely a structure too, but we're talking about shoreline grass. So this color all in here, the brown, is what you're looking for. So on this shoreline here, it's pretty basic. There's no grass, there's no nothing. You do have a little bit of submerged grass in there, but the shoreline grass starts right here and these bends right here so also this bend and then your your uh, pockets right in the little corner right there and this corner and then you got this point right there and then you have a little cut right in there and also that shoreline makes a bend right there so your bends your points your cuts are all things to look for and you want to try to find uh, an area with several of these scenarios so when you go fish it you have a lot of different stuff to fish and to to choose from also the shoreline makes a little cove right here so your coves are good this whole area would be good so it's a pretty good sized section of shoreline grass all in here and then it goes back to your basic your basic shoreline 
with a little bit of grass areas this is some some uh shoreline grass as well right there but it's just not very much so i'm looking for the the thicker parts of shoreline grass like this and then that shoreline did all this basic stuff no shoreline grass and then we're coming up to an area with one section of shoreline grass so i would definitely fish this area right here so this area right here has tons of structure changes tons of shoreline changes you have coves these are your coves right there and this is a cove and even these small ones right here are definitely worth targeting and then they're surrounded by that brown color that shoreline grass so I talked about points. These will be your points right here. These are also really good areas. And this one right there, and here's a small shoreline grass point, and even this one over here. So we got tons of areas right in here that have all kinds of structure changes and shoreline grass changes. So uh, this would be a really good area to target. We also talked about cuts. So this is what a cut looks like. It can also be referred to as a creek mouth. This is a little bitty one and this whole area would be real good especially on an outgoing tide because the outgoing tide will be funneling bait out of this little bitty creek and those fish know that and they'll be staged up right out in here waiting for that bait to come out there and then they'll ambush them here's some more scenarios right here you got your shoreline grass big old patch of it too real wide it comes out real far from the shore and the the ones like this will definitely hold fish on a higher tide deep inside the middle of it uh mostly reds drum also but this is all your shoreline grass um all in here and that but if you look at it a little bit more in detail from the shoreline grass going to the shore this makes a, this makes a cove also so your coves are good so i especially like areas that have several of these structure changes right in one spot this is a pretty good scenario right here you got that little creek that's coming this way that opens up to the bay. So this would be a cut or a creek mouth. Then you have a cove right here. And also this brown color right out here is shoreline grass as well. Not real thick shoreline grass, but definitely, uh, definitely worth targeting. Uh, over here, it's a little bit thicker. You can see it's got two sections of shoreline grass. You got your main section right there, and then you have a little gap between it, and then, you, and then it starts again. So you can kind of see a little cut right between the two shoreline grasses and it goes right right in there i really like targeting stuff like this i'll i'll push my kayak right up into the the grass and just scan the water and i'll and i'll look for that little cut where the grass clears out so you have a little bit of water you know that goes and, and i'll try to make a parallel cast into those little cuts so it's not just shorelines, it's also your islands that will have the shoreline grass coming off of those islands too. So this area here is a good looking example. You have your island right there, your mangrove island, and all this brown color is shoreline grass that sticks up out of the water. And even some on the backside here. And once again, this real wide area, the fish will go all the way up in there. So you got an area that's that you picked out. You're like, man, there's a lot of shoreline grass, a lot of structure changes, but is it going to be close enough for me to get my kayak to? Well, <laughs> then you have to go on Google Earth. And if you hit this little guy over here, the road will light up blue. And if you click on that blue, it will give you a real life image and you can scan and look if you're not familiar with the area and see, you know, can I, is it possible for me to pull in here and to launch my kayak? Given that there are no fences or no, no trespassing sign or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're not trespassing. So, um, look for, look for signs and fences. So now you have a launch that you think is close enough to the spot. You'll just have to measure it and, uh, and see how far it is to get to wherever you want to go. And, uh, and this will measure your, your whole course. You can measure your trip and see how, how far you actually want to go. This was only a half a mile. Yeah, we can definitely do that. <laughs> So uh, you can measure your trips as well on Google Earth. And then eventually you'll get to where you know that you're comfortable going one mile one way or two or three miles one way. 
and uh, and you'll start to find other spots that are further away but you know now that you're confident that you can do that so um, you start to find new stuff and find new fishing spots so I hope the tips were helpful thanks for watching and tight lines y'all